approach anxiety one of the most common problems when it comes to you actually meeting a girl or future girlfriend or future wife if you can't even speak to her in the beginning you're never going to get yourself a girlfriend are you so approach anxiety is something that i'm going to talk about today i'm going to analyze in my opinion what approach anxiety is i'm going to tell you how it works with game as well and i'm going to give you a few kind of hacks kind of strategies that you can overcome it keep in mind you cannot uh, just drink a drink or watch some sort of digital product uh, and then it's going to get rid of approach anxiety for you that's for the digital marketers and the fake scammers out there you have to face your fears that's life I'm sorry to tell you but that's life you need to face your fears I'm going to give you a few strategies that will make it easier for you but you still need to face your fears to overcome them. That is life. But before we get into it, make sure you click the subscribe button. I've also got a Telegram group. Just download Telegram on your phone. Uh, you can join my Telegram group and have a uh, one-on-one -on -one chat with me and my little group. Maybe have some one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. But before we, but yeah, just before we get into it, make sure you click the subscribe button. Join up to my Telegram group. Approach anxiety. I wrote a few notes here. Approach anxiety. Oh, but you're probably wondering what happened to my eyebrows. I, I dyed my eyebrows and dyed my hair. The reason is, I'm almost 40. My hair would literally be grey. And do you think a girl under 25 will even speak to me if my hair is bright white? No, I've tried it. They don't. They look at your. They literally look at you and then look up and they're like, Oh, see you later, Grandpa. Dye your hair. Uh, it's a little bit dark at the moment. Maybe tomorrow I'll start to look a little bit better. I've got a date later on to today. Hopefully, it, hopefully this doesn't burn it out for me. So, all right, approach anxiety. Approach anxiety. One of the, the biggest problems that you guys will face. Uh, so I'm gonna try to help you guys get through it today. Approach anxiety, wow. So, when you approach a girl, or when you are thinking of approaching a girl, you, your heart rate will start, you know, your heart will start beating, your adrenaline will start pumping. You will, when you approach the girl, sometimes you might notice that you're looking into, looking at her, and then you start wondering, you know, like feeling a little bit scared. It's not that you're scared of talking to the girl, it's that you're afraid that when you speak to the girl, you might be violently attacked and that is that is built into your genes through thousands of years of men talking to the wrong or approaching to mate the wrong girl and being violently bashed to death what do you think happens in uh, Africa even today if a guy goes into the wrong territory and speaks to the wrong girl the opposing tribe will come out and literally bash him to death this has been happening for thousands of years and if you have a look at say lions or or apes or you know animals in the jungle if you go and speak to uh, why, uh, girls that are part of a different uh, group you will be attacked by the alpha male of that group that's how it works and that's what's built into your DNA you are afraid to speak to her uh, Eighty percent of it is because you're afraid that you're going to be violently assaulted for doing so, and that's why a lot of guys they get themselves a wing. So you get yourself a wing, and then you feel, oh, okay, I can approach now. I've got someone to talk to. Go over there and speak to a girl. And what's really going on is you speak to the girl, and deep down, even though it's an unspoken thing between you and your wing. You think, okay, well, if I approach the girl and someone was to attack me, my wingman's going to jump in and protect me in a fight. You know, that's kind of what's going on. Because if you go out solo, you usually will have a lot more approach anxiety than when you have a wingman, don't you? And then after you get the first, say, two or three approaches out of the way, then, you, then you've, you've uh, for that day, you've uh, you've got into a rhythm and it's you've got rid of it you, the fear's gone you've like it's like uh, jumping off the bridge the first time into the water you uh, as soon as you do it once you can do it over and over again but that's kind of what is really going on when you get yourself a wing uh, another part of that problem is that 
you will go out with a wing sometimes and you will be fearful to approach really really good looking girls that you really want because you are afraid that your wingman will judge you because you're getting rejected uh, you want the validation of your wing uh, which negatively affects who you approach but you can't go out solo because you're afraid that you're going to get assaulted you know that's like that's really what approach anxiety is so therefore you need the wing and then the wing you're worried is going to judge you because you're seeking validation from other wings and then what happens is you find yourself getting uh, using some sort of a strategy which is generally accepted by your wing and other wings like the London day game model where you run around and you do it perfectly you say the exact same thing ABC so that when you approach the girl you've done the London day game model if she rejects you you can go to your wing and you say look well I did the ABCD I did I did the London day game model perfectly so therefore you can't really judge me for getting rejected and he's like yeah well you did it perfectly and so this is the trap the cycle that you get yourself into so if you're able to break out of that where you don't really need a wing you can go out solo you, you, you can uh, avoid approach anxiety and, and the fear uh, there are a lot of people out there that can go out solo and do a lot of approaches uh, they're called psychopaths or sociopaths and that's why people associate pickup with uh, psychopathy and sociopaths uh, the, the dark triad and I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard that it's because the guys that can go out solo consistently and not have any problems and literally spam all over the place they are actually psychopaths or sociopaths they have no approach anxiety at all approach anxiety is a healthy thing it proves that you are not uh, a psychopath pretty much uh, but what we can do is we can use different strategies so that you can work your way up to the level where you can go approaching solo you know you don't need the wingman as a protector or or your tribe so that you can go out and get women because that's kind of what it is you go out, you go out with a group of group of boys you, you're not scared of anyone assaulting you because there's a big group of you guys there's five or six of you guys so you can approach girls and you've got no problems uh, like even last night I, I saw this group of guys about five guys uh, there's like some really big guys that have had a few drinks and the smallest guy the tiny one the guy that's like four foot tall is going I'm looking for a fight I'm ready to go he's a real tough guy because he's with his group he has no problem talking to girls he's a real tough guy because he's got his group around him it's that group mentality it's like the pack pack mentality he's like part of a gang he's a coward but if he was by himself he wouldn't be talking so tough and and that's this is all associated with your approach anxiety it's all connected this is what approach anxiety is and then part of the problem with uh, this type of community is that you might find yourself a, a wing that judges you so therefore you need to use uh, really bad methods so how can you overcome it so a few a few ways that I have oh okay I wrote some notes <laughs> so just say you get you build yourself up and you're able to get out of the approach anxiety you're in that zone for that particular day there will still be girls that you really are attracted to you just think wow she's stunning uh, I, I love the look of this girl everything about her is amazing but you don't approach because there is a higher probability and you're right there is a higher probability she's going to reject you or friend zone you uh, but you feel you know this super good looking girl is out of your league so you don't even try and that is one thing that would destroy your game long term is not having a go or at least trying to approach the girls that you are really attracted to the ones that you really really want uh, and if you don't do that enough and you continue to avoid the girls that you really really want and you know it you go out and you see stunning girls and you don't do anything about it you know that you didn't approach that girl and that becomes a bad habit 
that will continue and plague you for the rest of your life unless you overcome it. It's another thing you need to overcome. Now there's a book that I'd like to recommend to you guys, it's called Grit by Angela Duckworth. Uh, this, this book uh, talks about how it's not necessarily skill and uh, uh, talent isn't just, it's not, uh, it's not something that you're just born with. Uh, the most successful people in the world have struggled to uh, overcome certain things. So just say they, they weren't good at, uh, they weren't good at studying or whatever. But the people with true grit, the ones that continued and continued to work at it and work at it, they're the ones that overcame it and ended up getting themselves a PhD and became famous scientists or whatnot. Or, or uh, people who weren't necessarily talented or uh, gifted uh, genetically uh, with sports, they, but they worked harder than anybody else, yet they, they found out a way to succeed. You know, this is grit, and it is very, it's very relative to what I'm talking about today. Uh, there's a lot of guys that I have met that are not willing to put in the time and effort, and they're not willing to change up their strategies over and over again until uh, they get the success that they want. So therefore, they end up. Uh, will they really just? jump up a little bit and that's approaching and then they just plateau for the rest of their lives and they never ever reach the next level and it's kind of sad when you see these guys that have been doing pickup for years and they think that they know everything but they they've never really put in the time and effort to get good at it they've never really had the type of girlfriend that they want and it's just this failing endeavor for the rest of their lives uh, grit is something that is very important uh, and if you were to get that book that would be a good book for you guys to read so where are we ah I read a book on emotional intelligence and there are really there's the optimist and there's the pessimist <laughs> um, a pessimist tends to uh, just think that okay well I'm a I'm a short brown guy or I'm a I'm a I'm a skinny white short white dude or I or I'm too old <laughs> you know uh, and, and they just say okay well I can't do this because these are my limitations uh, I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna project that I'm trying my best uh, but I'm not really going to do my best and I'm gonna I'm going to use that as an excuse and, and what what they do is they don't actually keep evolving and changing things like like uh, if you look at my eyebrows and my hair how many guys out there with gray hairs are dyeing their hair and their eyebrows you know to try and make them look a little bit younger because they know they've tried it at least uh, I don't know anybody <laughs> but um it, this is just an example of the type of stuff that you need to do in order to get the results that you want. Uh, and if you're not willing to change, you see, a pessimist will just go, oh yeah. Uh, they, they often say, oh, if they don't like me, it's their problem. Well, no, if they don't like you, that's your problem because you actually do want them uh, in using that as an excuse. Uh, it's like a guy like uh, my age saying, well, if they don't like grey hair, they're not the type of girl for me anyway. Well, well, no. <laughs> they are the type of girl for you. You just need to dye your hair and, and, and not be the type of guy they don't want. Uh, and that's, that's the optimist way of thinking. That's the way I think. I'm an optimist. Uh, I am constantly figuring out ways to overcome limitations. Uh, that's what makes me a really good coach. Uh, a pessimist uh, is going to just focus on the limitations and they're not really going to help you. Be... A pessimist often is just going to feel like, yeah, I'm done. This is all I can do. When there are little 1% hacks that will improve your, uh, your success. Uh, if that makes any sense, well, 
So, okay, where are we? How I have helped a few guys overcome approach anxiety. Now, I've spoke to you guys about how psychopaths and sociopaths, they have no problems, just they wake up, they're cold, they're not even warmed up, they just go bam, 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 as soon as they open the front door. You, as long as you're a normal guy, which I hope some of you guys are watching this, uh, you are going to have to figure out ways to overcome it yourself. And when you overcome it today, the next morning when you wake up, you start cold and you start from level one again. This is the reality of, appro of anxiety, uh, approach anxiety, uh, social anxiety, is that you start from level one every day that you wake up. And you need to use certain strategies to get yourself out of that and get level two, three, four, to the, to the level where you can approach girls in the street. Uh, and if you don't do enough approaches, uh, it's going to hamper your results. And if you're afraid to approach, and you want to use little hacks like uh, running and jumping and doing, doing ABC type hacks instead of uh, going over there and figuring out for yourself what works for you. Remembering in a, in a, in a, you need to have a calm, clear mind when you're approaching someone. Uh, you can't be over there all nervous and stressed because you're not going to remember clearly everything that happened and where you went wrong so that the next approach you can improve it. So therefore you need to deal with approach anxiety before you start to be able to properly analyze each of your approaches to move to the next level where you start to get the type of results that you want and really need and really deserve. So you need to be calm. You need to be uh, calm, cool, collected and ready to go. Uh, and so one of the strategies that I, I would often use is uh, go to the gym. <laughs> Sounds real simple, but get some cardio in, lift some weights, build up a sweat, uh, have a quick shower and then go straight out and try to do some approaches. Uh, because cardio and uh, lifting weights is kind of something that makes you feel like you're... It, 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 it is a, an artificial kind of fight if you know what I'm trying to say. So if you were to go into the gym and maybe hit the boxing bag for a little bit, it will simulate you being in a fight. And that is kind of what approach anxiety is. You're fearful that someone's going to attack you, but after or during the fight, the uh, adrenaline's kicked in and you are no longer fearful of the fight, you're just fighting. Uh, and you go into a, like a flow state and that's the next level. So one thing I have done in the past is there was one guy that, that had really bad approach anxiety so I brought some 16 ounce gloves and we had a bit of a box, put some headgear on and we actually just had a, a, a proper, you know, maybe 10 minute box until we were just covered in even 10 minutes of like punching each other. You, you get up a big sweat, you, you're exhausted afterwards, drink some water, uh, spray on some cologne and just go straight out there and do some approaches. And this guy had extreme approach anxiety. He was very fearful. But after putting on the boxing gloves and having a bit of a session, he had less approach anxiety. Uh, I'm sure you guys never heard that anywhere else. Uh, but that is... Uh, one hack that you can use is do a little bit of boxing with your buddy. Your wingman, if anything, would be far more useful if you went to a boxing gym and your wingman was a boxer and you got in the ring, put some headgear on, got into a fight and then went out solo to do approaches. That's the best wing. The wing that would get you in that mindset of approaching uh, without having someone judging you that you're not doing the, the, the model properly. Uh, my experience is I, I had a bit of a rough upbringing and so I have a unique experience when it comes to this is that uh, going to parties, gate crashing parties or getting in street fights or whatever, I noticed there was a pattern that when I would either get in a fight or there was threat 
threat of a fight, I would have less fear approaching girls at the party or anywhere else. And that, that kind of, in a way, helped me get laid a lot when I was younger. So, uh, not long ago, some junkie tried to attack me in the street. <laughs> a, a literal, literal junkie tried to rob me. And I got into a bit of a, you know, uh, you know, shoving and yelling match. After that, I was walking home, I had no problems uh, approaching girls, and I actually did. I met some American girl, and uh, she literally just came straight back to my place for dinner, and, you know, uh, it, it was like the simulated fight, even though it wasn't a proper, you know, brawl with the junkie, it got me in that mindset and got rid of all approach anxiety, and it's as if when afterwards I I had no problems approaching this American girl uh, and and she literally maybe she could sense that on me that I, I, I didn't have the fear and uh, she literally just came straight I said look I'll cook you dinner if you want and she came literally straight back to my place so uh, this has happened many times in my uh, experience and if you can somehow simulate that that will get rid of your approach anxiety, but it has to happen every single day. So uh, if you get yourself through it, so just say for instance, the perfect day would be, if you're gonna go do a day, a day of uh, day game, the perfect session would be maybe uh, doing some boxing and then jumping in the pool, doing a few laps, having a shower, and then straight after that, going out for a solo, day game session where you actively go out and do as many approaches as you can uh, within a limited amount of time don't become one of those day game degenerates that spend eight hours out there uh, you can get a lot more done within a, a short window and if, if you're working I hear a lot of excuses oh, I work six days a week or whatever there's no excuse there's no excuse um, earlier this year I was super duper busy the, I would only maybe have half an hour for a lunch break or something like that um, and in that half an hour break uh, I'm walking to the shops to get some food uh, and walking back I would do approaches uh, and and sometimes I would have dates after work from those lunchtime approaches just going to the shops getting a coffee getting some food in that little area there uh, because I live in the city so uh, often I would be able to get through uh, with uh, only a half an hour break at lunchtime and still do enough approaches to meet uh, more than most men so uh, there's no excuse that oh yeah I'm working six days a week because if I can do it at that half an hour break I can do it the half an hour or hour it takes me to get to work in the morning and that half an hour after work I can do a few approaches and get uh, the camera cut out so obviously I was waffling on way too much so I have a few things to do today uh, if you like this type of content you, you like my advice it actually makes sense to you uh, sometimes I feel like I'm living in an alternate universe with some of the stupid shit that I see out there uh, if you like my advice uh, I like to think that my, my advice is pretty good because uh, I'm actually actively out there participating and trying to push myself and become the best version I can uh, with not, not only pickup but everything else in my life. And so I like to think that my strategies are quite successful because I am quite successful in this, uh, especially in this field. Uh, so if you like that, Click the subscribe button, hang around. I've got a Telegram group if you want to chat with me one on one. Uh, uh, Austin Summers and David Bond actually joined up to my Telegram group just to have a look inside and then they left. So um, if you've got, if you got other pickup coaches uh, coming to your Telegram group, you're obviously doing something right. If they're maybe they're wondering what's going on in there. I must be, even with my shitty little channel that you're watching right now, I must be doing something right if big channels like Austin Summers and David Bond uh, see me as a competitor already. So click the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.